is 2017 and therefore it's soon 50 years ago since we had the summer of love here in San Francisco. And therefore I'm standing here around the Haight-Ashbury area to show you what a hippie really is. Is that good? That was great. We'll go with that. So, do we need any more clips? Yeah, we need a lot. Okay. We are a group of five students who are here in San Francisco. We've packed our camera gear and headed out and searched for what the modern hippie is like here now today, 50 years after the iconic summer of love. With long dreadlocks, peace symbols and colorful clothing, the hippies came up with a rebellious view on social norms. But they were very peaceful and only wanted love in the world. <laughs> well, I just met this beautiful woman called Ness. I know that you live in a, in a van, could you please show us uh, your van and uh, tell us a bit about your lifestyle uh, as, as a hippie? Oh yeah, totally! Hello, I'm Ness, this is my van, free hugs. Uh, this is my welcome mat, welcome to my car, please wipe your shoes. Uh, I put insulation in, uh, I have to replace the fabric up here, but I put insulation and uh, puff insulation on the inside. I built this bed, I got a futon. Um, and I cut it into pieces and I rebuilt it in my bed to make a full-size bed. I lit my van on fire by burning incense, um, but as far as van fires go, it's really good. <laughs> it was around the Haight-Ashbury area that the hippie movement in San Francisco started. This is where I'm walking right now. The hippies came to Haight-Ashbury because of the cheap rent then they started playing music for free. And this is what started the hippie wave on H. Ashbury. The hippie culture was all about loving everything around yourself and freeing your mind. For instance, through the use of drugs. Peace was also a well-known focus and else was expressing herself through art and tattoos. So I do uh, mostly symbolism. I do uh, ancient symbols because in a thousand years they're going to still be relevant and by the time I'm 40 it'll still matter. Like my fingers, I have joy forgiveness, happiness, love, compassion, and courage. Um, I also have, because I have, a, I have anxiety disorders, I have the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is the don't panic button. And so I put it on my hand so I can press it to help me relieve my stress whenever I'm having a panic attack. Yeah, I, so it's like a lot of symbolism. I, I took some sacred geometry classes and uh, I just want to be able to teach a class off of my tattoos, like if all computers and all books were on fire all at once, I'd still be able to pass on knowledge, ancient knowledge that I think would be awful to forget. So this is a very typical hippie bus that you would probably find during the 60s and it's one of those that we're gonna drive later this day to get a guided tour on hippies. We went on this magic bus hippie themed guided tour. It drove us on a psychedelic trip through the streets and sights of San Francisco. We drove through the financial district where the guide, Serene Rain, shouted at the people to run away, away from the limiting capitalistic state, something the hippies themselves tried to escape from. Of course we also drove through Haight-Ashbury, where we were told about the different historic parts of that district and some information about the hippies. Information that we grabbed the chance to follow up on in an interview after this bus trip with the tour guide. So the hippie culture still lives on in San Francisco. San Francisco is a sanctuary city, and right now if you read the newspapers about what's going on pol politically in this country, uh, the, sa this, the sanctuary cities are a haven. It means that somebody who is homeless or somebody who, is, who does not have the right papers, who might be an illegal immigrant, can come here, and it is a sanctuary. They will not get arrested. Uh, so that whole idea of anybody can come still exists today. Many people wonder, why San Francisco for the hippies? And San Francisco has been a free-thinking city. It's been a liberal city. It's where people go so they can express themselves and express their art. And so it was actually paved, the, the way was paved by the Beats, who started that counterculture in the 50s that were free thinkers. And they wanted, it really was a new beat, a new thought. And so they paved the way for the hippies in the 60s.
Besides from the Hate Ashbury area, Golden Gate Park is a great place to find hippies. So we're gonna take a look inside of that and see if we can find any hippies. Excuse me, well I kiss this kid. After spending some time here, we decided to look somewhere new for hippies, somewhere else than the populated Tate Ashbury, Natural Hippie Hill. Um, my name's Marielle, but um, my friends call me Truffles, and I'm from New Orleans. Um, I've lived all over the country, and um, that's how I first got into wanting to travel. Um, yeah, I ran away from home when I was 16 initially, but I finally made it out on my own when I was 17. And when I was 19 years old, I read this book called Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test. And that was the book that inspired me to really take off. In 1972, a lot of uh, the, the traveling people who were on tour with the Grateful Dead, and you know, they, they were sick of being on the streets of San Francisco. These people all came together and created Rainbow. And um, so when I went to the Rainbow Gathering, I got an, on an, onto another Rainbow bus, and the Rainbow buses are like kitchens. They set up their kitchens in the gatherings, and they cook free food for thousands of people. It's a really beautiful experience. I went from being in a car to being outside, my health crashed. Um, so I worked really hard. I saw a swoop, hat pins, and I went from uh, having $600 to now I have my van fully paid off. I have my uh, um, insurance is fine, and actually I'm starting my own business. And then I realized that I didn't have to constantly work to survive. I could actually be casual and like not have my nose to the grindstone. Like I could like sit back a little bit and choose my options of where I want to go. It's just when you're at the bottom, instead of being afraid of being at the bottom, once you get there, you know you're here, you're at the bottom. So where do you go from there? And then you realize that you actually have so much more freedom. You don't have a full-time job, you don't have bills to pay, and there's so much more opportunity. Miracles can happen if you just like, Ex, you know, look for them. You know, there's magic everywhere. So, the hippie culture still exists today, but just not as it did back in the 60s. Back then, they had other traditions and values, but you can still find peace and love just in its own 2017 perspective.